Well, Sports Minister Fakile Mbalula has again rejected claims that the South African government and SAFA were involved in any bribery related to the 2010 World Cup. Mbalula was speaking at a media conference at SAFA House in Johannesburg. Just a short while ago, he told journalists that payment for approved projects did not constitute bribery. We therefore wish to categorically deny that our country and government have bribed anyone to secure the rights for the 2010 FIFA World Cup. At the onset, we dismiss the allegations of bribery by our country. I also wish to indicate that as the current minister had noted the payment of the 10 million rand in the indictment and noted that this money was not paid either through government coffers or those of the local organizing committee. The fact that a payment of 10 million rands US dollars was made to an approved program above board does not equate to bribery. Those who allege should prove their allegations. We refuse to be caught up in a battle of the United States authorities and FIFA. Well, for more on this, we cross to Simon Burke, our sports reporter. He attended the briefing at Safa House. Simon, good afternoon to you. Uh, this is now really about South Africa posturing strongly against the corruption allegations. Can you just sum up his latest dismissal of those allegations this afternoon? Well, the minister was quite adamant and he went into some detail to explain why this is not a bribe in any way, shape or form, while, why everything was done above board and with full uh, disclosure and also full correspondence between SAFA, uh, the South African government and FIFA as to why $10 million was paid to the CONCACAF region for a legacy diaspora type of initiative fund. Um, and that's, that's really the crux, is he went into a lot of explanation as to why the diaspora of Africa, especially those in the Caribbean, were so important and had been planned all, all the way up in, since 2000, that this was going to be one sort of project that uh, the first African World Cup was going to put all its um, uh, might behind and give back to the continent of Africa and of course the diaspora in the Caribbean. Um, and he was very adamant that this was done and that because no one picked up on it, it's not their fault. They've got everything to prove that they did this. All right, and Simon, um, after much anticipation around this whole uh, press briefing, SAFA officials were not at the presser this afternoon. Why is that? Well, the minister was also clear on that fact that the LOC was a, uh, a committee that did their function up until one point, and now they disbanded, and they were no longer necessary or needed to be at the at this. And from here on, and of course, since this whole uh, scandal has broken, it's been the government who's been dealing with this and there was no need for anyone else to be there. So it was a big pity that none of the major role players were involved or were there to answer questions as to what happened, what was the, the, the run of events, and why did no one know about this, and why are we not getting adequate explanation? The minister obviously had pains to point out that he is explaining, and he's always explaining. And Simon, uh, as soon as um, Sepp Blatter announced his resignation, it wasn't much long after that, there were really people earmarking who they would want to um, take his place. So who is likely to succeed him? Can you give us any answers on that? Well, there's only speculation up until this point. Obviously, the big name coming out of it is Michel Platini, the head of UEFA. He was the most vociferous against uh, Sepp Blatter. He tried to rally the troops at the FIFA Congress against Sepp Blatter. He's definitely a name that's come up. Also, the person who stood against Sepp Blatter, Prince Ali bin Al Hussein of Jordan, he's another one. Then there's a couple more, Jerome Champagne, Michael van Praag, uh, Louis, Fie Louis Figo. These were guys, the names were, came up and they, they stood for election, but they fell away in the end. Uh, so I think the big name is Michel Platini who might step up uh, and, f and fill the void. 
However, Europe steering the ship, I don't know how that's going to end. And that's, that's one of the key f uh, things that FIFA is a bit worried about. And of course, most um, every other country in the world. Um, is this going to be an agenda um, dictated by the Europeans? We don't know yet. But Simon, then, is this uh, the start of a swift unraveling at FIFA then? Probably, quite possibly. I mean, I think the net is closing in. I think Sepp Blatter saw the writing on the wall. He's kind of, uh, you know, explained things that his man mandate was untenable now, that uh, a lot of people weren't listening to him. Yes, he had 133 votes in the Congress, but he could kind of pick up that no one else was following him. Um, however, he, there's still a lot to be done. He's got a, a lot of structures in place. He says we need to revisit those structures and we need to probably make the, the Federation smaller in terms of how it does its business. Um, but that, that's something for the future. All right, Simon, thank you very much. We'll leave it there. That's Simon Burke live from Safa House in Johannesburg. Well, staying with this.